Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who uh, wrote comments last week. I'd also like to thank uh, this old Tony for using me as a setup for his joke. Appreciate the advertising. Thanks very much, Tony. I've not yet received the aluminium, which I need to continue with the camera stand to build. In the meantime, I think I'll take a look at what I did wrong and see what I can learn from this. Huh? Yeah, I kind of want to avoid a repeat of that crash of the mahu I did last week. If you didn't see it, this is what I'm talking about. The long-time viewers will know that I've always worked in the aviation industry. You know, if we look back at the accident rate of aircraft back in the late 60s and projected the, the growth in aviation since then, if they'd done nothing about safety, we'd be at a point now that multiple times a day air disasters would occur. One of the ways that aviation has managed to change that failure rate is by developing a culture of looking hard at what causes accidents and trying to address them. And there it is. A reminder to my carelessness. This is the spot drill I ruined. Peter from Edge Precision reached out in the comments section with some advice of how to avoid that sort of thing. He also followed up with an excellent video which you really need to look at if you're into this sort of CNC thing. Down towards the work. And then I'm going to let it come down fairly close. I'm going to push the feed hold button. Here you can see the Linux CNC interface that I'm using. The in graphical interface was designed by a guy called Norbert in, in Germany. Set up with a bunch of soft keys around the edge to control different functions. These ones always have the same functions. The ones along the bottom change depending on which mode you're in, whether you're MDI mode, running a program, jogging. In terms of a distance to go display, it doesn't really matter which DRO mode you're in. For example, in the G54 mode, it shows the G54, but also shows absolute and distance to go. In the distance to go mode, it just rotates those through and rotates a third time for the absolute mode. So you always have the distance to go information available. It looks like you just have to use it. The next thing Peter covered so well in his video was the use of the max velocity override and also the feed rate override when setting up programs. Obviously there's some sort of interaction between them. So when I do a feed rate override, it automatically resets the, the velocity override. When I designed this interface, I did realize that that's kind of a normal, normal function of a CNC machine, which is why I, I installed two encoders, which also have push buttons in them. Now you can see the top button is currently programmed to reset my feed rate override back to 100%. The second one, is programmed to switch between the rabbit or high-speed jog mode and the slow-speed jogging. However, uh, it's, mom it's a momentary switch running a function which, uh, which I really need to latch. So that is one of those classic sort of human factors process fails. You know, I knew I needed these, I installed them, but once the machine sort of started running, in the joy of being able to do something and machine something with it, getting these debugged and actually working got pushed onto the back burner. And that's one small contributing factor, one of those holes in the Swiss cheese, which leads to eventually crashing the machine. Pulling up the hull show and then looking at the pins of these two encoders, you can see that uh, the Mesa card is correctly counting the encoder pulses on both encoders. All I need to do is to work out how to connect those signals which are working to those sliders. It's only a couple of lines of code in the HAL file to make those connections. Eventually. Well after a bit of mucking around in the config file I've now got this working. I've set up the top wheel to change the jog speed with the push button to jog between turtle and full speed. So now I can set a jogging speed. And the second one, GMOCAPI obviously couples max velocity and feed rate override. So I guess 
Norbert knew what he was doing when he did this. Basically, it sets both, and whenever you push the button, it just resets both to 100% feed rate and full velocity. Uh, with this machine, I can't really use a spindle override knob. This machine's got a gearbox. There's no VFD on this main spindle motor, so the only way to change the spindle speed is by stopping the spindle, mechanically changing gear, which Linux CNC can do. There's no real point in using spindle override because you can't adjust it during a program. You have to stop and restart. I got the machine up and running. Didn't go the extra mile to get these implemented. Always had a bit of a nagging doubt of how helpful they could be and how I should get them going. But it took an avoidable crash and some, some good feedback to actually give me the kick in the pants I need to actually go back in and, and finish this job. So that was pretty darn lame. Linux CNC also offers the command screen information. It's down here. Which tool is loaded, what, it's, what the tool diameter offset would be, and what the tool length offset would be. Tools you can see are loaded with this. this. So if we go, for example, to a tool that does have a, a length at least. So if we change tools. It's just heading off to the tool change position. And the tool length offset is currently not set. If I go in the MDI and do a G43, it should set that tool offset. If we now go back, oops, go back, we see G43 is now set, and the tool offset length has also been set. All of that information which, uh, which Peter recommended in his excellent video on how to how to use a CNC machine is all available in Linux CNC. I just wasn't using it, didn't realize how to use this stuff, so really appreciate that. So why did I crash this part? To get to the bottom of that, we need to look at tool length offset. Each of the CNC manufacturers has kind of got their own flavor of G-code. There is a vanilla flavor, which is defined in a, an ISO document or RS-274 but none of the manufacturers really follows it completely. Linux CNC is close, but there are a couple of, of deviations from the standard. Just like there being a, a ton of different proprietary CAD formats, we're also going to need to output G-code software that fits the machine, which it's going to run on. And for that, we need a post processor. I had mine set up to do basically manual touch off at each tool change. So I'd set it up with this kind of end of file block at every tool change. Yeah, on this job I then switched over to presetting my tools, but didn't fix the post processor. So that was another big error. Because that tool that I needed, the eight millimeter end mill, was already in the in the spindle, I left this uh, tool change commented out. This header G49 turned tool length compensation off. But then the G43 tool length compensation on was commented out. So I've edited the program start in my post processor and also edited the tool change in the same post processor. So now I need to reprogram the software between my ears. Once a tool goes to the tool change position, I need to set the feed rate down, then select the block run mode. Complete the tool change. Check the tool offsets and uh, work offsets are correct. Use feed hold when approaching the part. And finally, check the distance to go against the work. That's it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching.